Do you know who will be saved? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. A man died and went up to heaven. St. Peter met him at the gate, brought him inside, and took him on tour of the place. At a certain point, they came to an enclosure surrounded by a high wall. As they were passing it, Peter said, Keep very quiet as you pass this place. Why? the man asked. In case we might disturb those inside, Peter answered. Who is inside? the man asked. St. Peter said, Catholics, you see they think they are the only ones in heaven. In fact, if they found out that there are others in heaven, they would be very disappointed. In fact, some of them would probably ask for their money back. The kingdom of heaven is not a private club. In today's gospel reading, Jesus answers the questions of how many will be saved. He tells his listeners that instead of asking how many will be saved, one must choose the narrow gate of love, agape, sacrificial love, in order to enter into salvation. Long before the first Christians argued on whether or not to bring the Gentiles, the pagans, into the community, we read in the first reading, Isaiah telling Babylonian exiles who should be recipients of God's eternal salvation. After 47 years in captivity, the Jews returned to Jerusalem, and Isaiah addressed them, especially the younger members with their pagan wives. That salvation is not just limited to the Jews. Yahweh, in fact, welcomes pagans into Judaism. The non-Catholic doctrine on salvation was taught by Calvin and is currently broadcast by televangelists. Once saved, you are always saved. In spite of your future sins and even apostasy, meaning rejection of Christianity by someone who formerly was a Christian, one is saved by the shed blood of Jesus when as a young person or an adult, one accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, confesses one's sins and prays the sinner's prayer, asking God's pardon and forgiveness for one's sins. What about the Catholic teaching on salvation? Salvation is a past, present, and future event. We were saved from the bondage of sin when we were baptized as children or adults. We are being saved at present when we cooperate with God's grace by loving others as Jesus did, by sharing our blessings with the needy, and by getting reconciled with God daily, asking His forgiveness for our sins. We will be eternally saved when we hear the loving invitation from Jesus, the judge at the moment of our death and on the day of the last judgment, saying, Good and faithful servant, you are faithful in little things. Enter into the joy of your master. Being part of the Christian community is both a blessing and a privilege. For to be saved is to live in a personal, loving relationship with our Lord and with others. For to enter the narrow gate means to embrace love and to share it and live it. But for many of us, it becomes challenging when we are consumed by hatred, envy, and jealousy and revenge. At the end of our life, the question really to be asked of us is not, did you go to Mass every Sunday, prayed your novenas and rosaries daily? But how much have you practiced sacrificial love? dying to yourself often so that others might see Jesus in you. With this perspective, let us count the number of people we have hated, judged and condemned, resented, did not forbear and forgive, manipulated, corrupted, gossiped and slandered. Let us recall how much we have shared and how much joy we have given to the poor around us. For whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. As you come face to face with our God and Judge, we may even be surprised at who we will see on his right and left. People we may have regarded as pagans, the animists, agnostics, and even atheists. For however we regarded them in our lifetime, they may have been the ones who showed love, who lived their lives for others as Jesus did, who heeded Jesus' call. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, it is so difficult to enter the narrow gate when my heart is filled with hatred and unforgiveness, greed and selfishness, envy and jealousy. Heal me, O Father, and make me holy. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.